He's the most famous player in high school football. Being a quarterback in Texas is hard enough. The expectations, the scrutiny, the star DNs trying to take your head off. But now imagine you're the son of one of the greatest football players to ever do it. You might as well have a bullseye on your back. Every time you look to the sidelines, you're reminded of what he accomplished. Every time you look to the sidelines, you're reminded of the legacy on your back. Every time you look to the sidelines, Deion Sanders is coaching you up. Don't do that no more! Do what I tell you to do! No other high schooler in the country is facing this kind of pressure. Every time you pop open IG, you see the hate. Everybody's watching you. And you've been dealing with this since before you were 14? How would you handle all that? There's really only one way. Shut everybody up. 39 and two is a starting QB. Almost 9,000 passing yards. 123 touchdowns. Back to back to back Texas State champion. All in just three years of high school ball. This story is about living up to impossible expectations. This is the story of Primetime 2.0, Shador Sanders. Shador was born February 7, 2002. He was raised in Cedar Hill, Texas and grew up playing multiple sports. My guy was legit in basketball, baseball, and football. Just like his pops, Primetime himself. Dion dominated the NFL for 14 years, a two-time Super Bowl champ who not only made eight Pro Bowls, but changed the game forever on and off the field. People call him the greatest corner of all time. Dion saw that same greatness in Shador as a kid. No joke, at the age of seven, his dad nicknamed him Grown because he was a grown man in a kid's body. Shador was primed for big things, but wasn't like his pops in every way. He wasn't as loud as Dion and not quite as flashy. He likes to go fishing, play video games, and just kick it with his boys. His two older brothers, Dion Jr. and Shiloh, always kept him grounded and set the standard. Dion Jr.'s got his own business and clothing line, and Shiloh's playing SEC football at South Carolina. Shador was surrounded by success, and it humbled him. While Dion was forever a dual threat, from an early age, his son's calling was always gonna be football. By January 2017, Shador started getting real buzz when he was named an 8th grade All-American. At the same time, the whispers and doubts started getting louder. Some said he only got the accolade because of his dad. He wasn't good enough without his last name. Being a Sanders means being able to handle this kind of hate. The outside noise wasn't going to get any quieter for his next chapter either. High school football. And not just any high school football. I'm talking high school football in Texas. Shador began training with legendary QB coach Jeff Blake to improve his game. The entire summer before his freshman year, they worked on his technique and how to be a better pocket passer. Set, move, hit, throw. The power comes from your legs. I keep trying to tell you that. Shador didn't have Dion's speed. So as a QB, he was going to have to win with his arm more than his legs. With the pressure of having that famous last name, he needed to make sure his game was on point going into high school at Trinity Christian Cedar Hill. On July 15, 2017, before even taking one snap of high school ball, Shador got his first D1 offer from the University of Oregon. Man, you know your big time if Oregon's your first offer. With fall camp underway, Shador was not only trying to make varsity, but compete for the starting job at quarterback. With Dion as the offensive coordinator, he was gonna have to earn both of those. There was no way Dion was giving his son the keys to his offense if he wasn't the best QB in camp. But Shador battled through the Texas heat and earned that QB one spot. All his hard work with Jeff Blake paid off. For real though, how many freshman quarterbacks start on varsity in Texas? I mean, come on. On September 1st, 2017, Shador played his first high school game throwing two TDs in a win over the Episcopal School of Dallas. No first game jitters, nada. From there on, Shador knew he belonged. That season, Sanders would go on to throw for over 2,000 yards and 34 touchdowns. Remember, he's just a freshman. It wasn't an easy first year by any means though. 
dealing with his dad as an offensive coordinator was definitely tough. Nobody was harder on Shador than Dion, but that's only because he believed in his son's potential. An NFL legend expects a lot out of his son. Despite all that, Shador delivered, leading his team to a 12-1 record. And on December 8, 2017, Sanders and Trinity Christian took down Regents for the Texas State Championship. In the title game, Shador balled out, throwing for five TDs. He played like there was no pressure on his back, like he was made for moments like this. 15 years old with ice in his veins. One year of high school football in the books, and Shador was already making a name for himself. From here, the noise and the doubters would only get louder. The target on his back, even bigger. But my guy was on a mission. For Shador, this was not only the beginning of a Sanders dynasty in Texas, but the real start of his college recruitment. After scholarship offers came in from Baylor and Syracuse, on December 21st, 2017, his pop's alma mater came knocking a chance to play at Florida State. Almost no freshman ever pulled the trigger on their college choice though. With so many other offers on the horizon, things were just getting started. Despite his recruitment taking off, Shador still had some time to be a kid. 2017 flipped into 2018 and more big time offers started rolling in. Louisville, Florida, LSU, Georgia. And real talk, Story programs don't just send out offers because of a last name. By the time his sophomore season came around, Shador had a dozen offers and was getting more and more of the spotlight, but he was just getting started. Shador was a Sanders after all. 2018 was another chance to prove he was worthy of his last name and the early hype. In year two, Shador continued where he left off, dropping dimes and winning, a lot. The 2018 season brought a different dynamic. Trinity Christian were the defending state champs. Now it wasn't just Shador with a target on his back, but the whole team. Every rival, every opponent was gonna bring their A game every Friday night. They thought they was ready. They thought they was ready. On September 22nd, 2018, early on in the season, Shador had a chance at a legacy drive. Trinity Christian trailed the Melissa Cardinals by one point with 50 seconds left. From his own seven yard line, Shador hit his receiver for a 93 yard bomb up the middle for the win, keeping their perfect season alive. When the regular season was over, my guy had passed for 42 touchdowns. That's eight more than he put up as a freshman. Trinity Christian were 13 and 0 headed into their second straight year in the state championship game. December 8th, 2018 was the big game and Shador had capped off an undefeated season with another state ring. 49 to 24, Young Prime caught another dub against Regents. They had to be sick of Shador by now. He threw three touchdowns and silenced more of the Twitter trolls. Back to back state champ. By now, the secret was out. Shador could handle the expectations. He was the real deal. I used to think Shador was like one of them Hollywood kids that you live off their dad. But when I got here, I grew a love for Shador because Shador is a hard worker. When the summer of 2019 hit, Shador was racking up even more D1 offers. Penn State, Bandy, Michigan, Mississippi State. Now it was time to start getting serious about the next level and hit the recruiting trail. On June 5th, 2019, Shador went down to Alabama to work out at Nick Saban's camp. The iconic Crimson Tide, Roll Tide. Let's just say Shador balled out. That same night, a lifelong dream came true. The very next day, Shador visited Bama's biggest rival, Auburn. And yep, they offered him too. Crazy. Later that summer, Shador took a trip to Cali to check out UCLA. I mean, who wouldn't want to play college ball in LA? Well, it's good that he's giving more thought to it. It could be one particular thing that you may not like and you may cross them off the list. Shador was a wanted man all summer. Even Tennessee hopped on the wave. But after his nationwide college tour was over, Shador wasn't quite ready to make a commitment. Sitting on 25 plus offers, you know this wasn't something to rush. Before he made the biggest decision of his life, Shador had his eyes set on a three-peat. Year three of high school ball was about to be real different though. We'd been following Shador since day one and wanted to give him and Prime their own reality show. 
With his eyes set on winning that third state title, the whole world was about to be watching. And Shador already had mad clout on IG with almost 200,000 followers before the show even came out. Now in the fall of 2020, our guys got over 350K on the gram. OT started filming Primetime 2.0 in August, documenting Shador's junior season at Trinity Christian with plenty of screen time for his OC. Let's just say a lot happened. We watched him take on Preston Stone, arguably the best quarterback in Texas, and saw his team's 24 game win streak snapped. Cedar Hill had to dig deep if they wanted to repeat at state. We saw him save a teammate from quitting the team. Bro, what's up, bro? Come what's on. going on, bro? The quitter is a quitter. A quitter going to continuously quit with the right amount of pressure. I feel like I need to do whatever I need to do to get back on the team, bro. And deal with his dad possibly leaving to coach Florida State. Deion Sanders has emerged as a candidate for the Florida State head coaching job. Most importantly, we saw him just try to be a normal kid. But when it came down to football, Shador performed under the OT lights, like he always has. While we were filming, my man threw for 3,400 yards and 47 TDs on top of that, putting up some straight Pat Mahomes numbers. On November 1st, 2019, in a 56-7 win over Grace Community, Shador threw for 400 yards and seven TDs, seven. And what do you know, a month later, he beat Austin Regents for the third straight year for his third straight ring. Easily best quarterback in the country. Back. I don't know why they keep thinking they can beat Young Prime. Shador did get ejected late in the fourth, but the game was already out of reach. But wow, he went back to back to back. Not even dad had done that. I think it's safe to say when it comes to high school football, Shador's got nothing left to prove. And he did that last name proud. Over the past few years, it's safe to say Shador shut the haters up. He showed the world he's not just Dion's son. He's his own man with his own legacy and he's still writing it. Heading into his senior year, Shador's already been named an All-American and is sitting on 30 D1 offers. At first, it looked like Shador was gonna take his talents to FAU. No surprise Sanders wanted to be different. But when Dion got the head coaching job at Jackson State, it was too good of an opportunity to pass up. Now we'll get to see Primetime 2.0 take it to the next level. Father and son go into battle in college. Before then, Shadour's got one more year of high school ball. And it's gonna be a movie. You know OT's gonna be there every step of the way. We can't wait to see how it plays out this year and beyond for our boy Primetime 2.0. OT is taking over the world, y'all. You gotta get fitted head to toe like your boy. Woo, yeah, I'm rocking that Overtime Fits Takeover Collection. If you're trying to add it to yours, man, make sure you hit the link below in the description. I gotta go tell my mama I'm on overtime. Mama!